So education is all about, I'm sure all of you know, there are two kinds of education. One is education for the purpose of developing certain skills which is required in the modern societies. Numerical skills, language skills, right? And now in the modern days, digital skills. The second one is the professional you know, education that you're all going through, particularly in this university, medical education or engineer education, where you also learn certain domain knowledge which you are going to use in your profession. Now, in the modern days, research has become an essential skill. That's what I want to sort of put it across. An essential skill, like the way you have to develop numerical skills and language skills and digital skills, you also need to have digital research skills. And developing those research skills is extremely important for your living, your livelihood, your professional career, and your long-term you know, career satisfaction that you have contributed something to the society. If you do well, all of you do well, of course the society will does, will also will do well, right? So in that context, developing research skills are very, very, very important. The second is, of course, the interdisciplinary aspect of your education, and the, and the research has to be more translational so that you can contribute to the society. So um, historically, if you look at from Indian perspective, since 1947, where we were, lower, the poorest in terms of uh, the economy, the lowest in terms of literacy of the population, but still we have come a long way in about 75 years, and we are now the fifth largest economy, and the, the number of middle class population in this country is much larger than perhaps put together an entire world, right? And of course, minus China, of course. Wherever you have to talk about China is a separate world now. And in that context, why, how we actually came about is because of the importance that we gave to research. Just take one example, Green Revolution, right? When Green Revolution happened, it basically provided food security to this country. Food security is the one which was most important before we start even thinking about anything else in the, in, in the, in the society, right? And the food security was obtained not simply because of few top class scientists who provided the new varieties and new agronomic practices to grow you know, more food. But you also had to do what is called multi-location trials, something what uh, you know, Professor Kanitkar alluded to in the beginning, that you had to do multi-location trial even if some idea is already there and being implemented in one place. Similarly, if you had to do multi-location trial for new varieties, you need to do domain knowledge of genetics, plant breeding, agronomy, statistics, more importantly, and how to understand what is control and what is experimental. In the process, you also learn how to write reports. You also learn how to make sure that whatever you do is correct, so you learn certain ethical and moral practices. So all of this put together, we could actually contribute to the Green Revolution. There, Thousands and thousands of undergraduate students in a small agriculture colleges to universities contributed to this. It's not only a few, uh, you know, scientists. Uh, it's the contribution of the entire group of agriculture students and the scientists put together. Now, 21st century is a completely different world, right? And India is also in the 21st century. We want to make our economy more knowledge-driven. It cannot be only service-oriented economy, right? So in that context, we need to change the way we learn, we need to change the way we teach, we need to change the way we do our professions, right? In that context, research becomes really central to our education as well as our profession. Why I told you research is really essential, you look at this. The world is changing much faster than you can even predict what could happen. So you're all thinking that you'll, you know, end of five years, you will have a degree, and after five years, you'll do one more degree, and in about 10 years, you will be in some job. How do you know that job exists, right? And that may be a completely new job for which you're not even prepared for. So how do you prepare yourself for a job which doesn't exist today, which you can't even imagine, right? So that itself will start thinking in a process where it's, you don't worry about the societal problems. Look at your own future problem. You have to work towards preparing yourself for a future which you don't know what it would be like, right? And how do you prepare yourself for that? For that, you need certain research bent of mind. And the future is going to be even more or even less predictable because of the climate change and other problems that we are facing. And, and the other thing is in the context of this particular venue as well as 
this particular thematic uh, you know, conference, the nutrition and health is going to be the most important factors on which we have to do research again and again. It's not that one day you do research and solve the problem of nutrition and health forever for the next 200 years. Every, every time is different. Every space is different, right? So you have to really look at health and nutrition from different perspective in different time and space again and again. So the research is a continuous process, particularly in the context of health, uh, nu you know, uh, nutrition, health, and environment, right? So in that context, again, we need a very large number of researchers, uh, you know, and then we need to prepare ourselves for that purpose. So because it's less predictable, the future, your own professional future, I'm not talking about the future of the world or future of mankind or future of anything, right? So f only way you can prepare yourself, if you have better analytical ability, we have ways of connecting knowledge to the real life problem. That's what innovation is all about, application of knowledge to solve real life problems in a very systematic way. Creative, critical and creative thinking, which is again very important, and otherwise you will not be able to understand your own world five years later after you come out of this university, and you need to, that you need to learn yourself. Because once you are outside the university and you're in a different world, right, it's a new world, and how do you prepare yourself for that? You need to have your own ability to do that. Self-learning ability. Knowledge is expanding really, really fast. Again, Professor Kanitkar alluded to how fast the knowledge is, you know, accumulating, right? We are discovering again and again new uh, sort of domains of uh, knowledge, not just simply adding incremental knowledge to every discipline. And you can never learn everything that is to be learned in four to five years of a degree program, right? Even if you do a two degrees, you know, bachelor's and master's and do a PhD and so forth. I mean, if more and more knowledge is coming, and if you can learn on your own, that's what self-learning is all about, then you would know how to use the knowledge for solving real life problems, right? You are professional, you know, career related, or actually if you want to become, you know, uh, someone who can solve the real life problem in health environment and, and so forth. Right? And for that, you need to have both interdisciplinary thinking as well as self-learning ability. And self-learning ability, interdisciplinary thinking, critical thinking, analytical ability, all of that comes if you do research. Previous speakers have already showed, and also the, you know, Professor V.K. Pauls, you know, he showed the exemplary uh, work that done by the four stalwarts of this country in the, in the area of public health. And each one of them is basically a research project. They may have solved the lives, a problem of uh, health. They may have saved, you know, millions of lives. But finally, what they were doing on a day-to-day -day basis was doing research. And for those, that research, they had all these qualities. And to acquire these qualities during your undergraduate program, doing research is important. So, very quickly, we have gone are the days when you think that research is about you know, sitting in a room, thinking about something, and you're writing a paper. Einstein did, Newton did, all of those people did. That was a completely different era, right? Modern day is very different. The problems are different. The scale of the problem is different. And the number of people who are, need to be involved in an interdisciplinary way, solving a problem, is a completely different ball game compared to what was being done 100 years ago, right? And we always thought that doing interdisciplinary research, doing collaborative research, team science is very difficult in a country like ours, but we have shown in the COVID time that actually we could do that. So better to use, the, take the full benefit of the momentum that is generated for, for, for solving the problem of COVID-19, not only in India and elsewhere in the world, and then we need to move more towards uh, interdisciplinary as well as collaborative research. So you need, it's important that Amongst you who are, want to become scientists or engineers or medical graduates or clinicians, you need to develop you know, at least some understanding, basic understanding of other disciplines. You need to be an economist if you have to also become an engineer and solve a new you know, real life problem. You need to be a biomedical researcher if you have to become a clinician. You, of course, you need to have statistics and data science skills irrespective of which profession that you uh, take up. Yeah. And new education policy 2020 is trying to provide 
the structural basis for implementing some of these requirements of the future. That's how to change the current education system and how to inculcate research skills amongst our students so that the future is better secured. That's the purpose of NEP 2020, and it is actually providing some kind of a structural basis for this. But this structural basis is not enough. Every university has to innovate. Every college has to reinvent itself to meet the requirement for the future. And of course, interdisciplinarity or multidisciplinarity comes when your curricular structure is such that it is interdisciplinary in nature. For example, you know, the liberal arts education, which NEP 2020 um, is, um, um, you know, advocating, as, as well as already several universities uh, in the country, uh, like in the uh, Western countries, have initiated already new liberal arts education, which is very, very important in the context of, um, uh, you know, developing interdisciplinary skills. Now, India is also introducing what is called Science and Technology Innovation Policy 2022, which has already sort of gone through several rounds of uh, review. And here, we also need to provide some kind of a, uh, an infrastructural you know, system in place, governance in place, so that research takes it to the next level. It's not simply doing you know, a few scientists doing research, you provide them funds and equipment. More than that, the governance such that its research becomes more inclusive. Undergraduate student, postgraduate students participate in research. The research skills are developed so that it can be used for industry or in academia, right? And teachers, because the, the next, the largest job in this country going to be teacher's job. Because 1.5 billion people, very large number of them are first generation learners today. They'll all come to higher education. Even a small fraction of them, like let's say 30% of them as per the GR, they come to higher education. It's going to be huge increase in the higher, number of higher, you know, uh, undergraduate students in this country, irrespective of which discipline they are. So to teach them, you need better technology as well as good number of la good teachers in large number. Again, introducing research in the university system is as part of the curriculum itself is very important to train next generation uh, professionals as well as teachers. And this is something not for the student, it's for the faculty. Um, we need to mentor the faculty to do research, whether in the college or university, we need to uh, ensure that the faculty take the students um, in their research projects, the undergraduate students, so forth. So there are very different ways of doing this. We can have a mentor mentee kind of a, you know, interactions. There are also a large number of you know, meetings that we are organizing in India, for example, a young investigator meeting by India Bioscience. And there, the, there is some kind of a mentoring happens on how to do research in a country like ours, at, at the same time being you know, uh, very productive in their career. I think I'll stop here and we can take some questions later. Thank you.